Okay, I had an SAT, SAT student that I was working with who took an SAT practice test, ran into this problem, read the uh, solution manual for this problem and didn't quite understand it. So I told her I'd uh, create a video to try to explain it in a little better detail. I didn't draw the prisms too well, but you get the idea. Here's prism X, it has dimensions LWH. And if prism Y is similar to prism X, that means there's a constant multiplier that we can multiply times each linear dimension to get the dimensions of the new prism, which could be larger or smaller. Uh, but K has to be greater than zero. So the new dimensions for prism Y are KW, KL, KH. And now if I come up with formulas for the surface area, of prism X, it's two LWs because that's the top and the bottom. There's plus two LHs, that is the right and left areas of the right and left side and two HWs, which is the front and the back. And if I come up with the formula for the surface area of prism Y, I'll be taking KW times KL, but there's two of them, top and a bottom. And similarly for the sides and the front and the back. But notice that every term has K times K in it. So I can factor out a K squared. And what's left is that expression right there. So K squared times the surface area of prism X will give me the surface area of prism Y. And that's in generally true that if K is a multiplier for linear dimensions, then K squared would give you the multiplier for the new area and volume works similarly, except you have to multiply by K cubed. So given that, here's what we know. The surface area of prism X is 58. Surface area of prism Y is 1450. I had to multiply this 58 by K squared to get the 1450. Remember K is the constant that we multiply times the linear dimensions. So if we multiply K squared times the area, we'll get the new area. So solving for K squared, we get 25. So K is five. That's the multiplier that gets us from prism X to prism Y. And now for volume, the volume of prism X is unknown, but the volume of prism Y is 1250. To get from here to here, we had to multiply the volume of X by K cubed, because we're dealing in volume. But we know K is one is five, so K cubed is 125. That's why we went to all this trouble up here. And if 125 V sub X equals 1250 V sub X is 10, the problem asks for the sum of those two volumes. So we have to add the 1250 and the 10. And that indeed does gives us 1260 cubic centimeters. Okay, there you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, post comments.